All right, welcome back everyone to High Peaks Home. I'm Sean Duane, Nick's holding the camera, and it's back to just the two of us again. And we are back to Franklin full time. Last week, we had a really good week. Um, for just two guys, we are getting a lot done. The first project that we had, well, I guess I should say, the biggest project that we did last week, we'll show you at the end of the video, so stay tuned for that. But our biggest dread of this entire project wasn't the foundation, it wasn't pulling you know, 30 ton of material out of the back or out of the front. It wasn't, you know, residing the building or replacing the windows. Nick and I came in here almost a year ago and tried to rip down the ceiling. This ceiling had anywhere from, I'd say, half an inch to an inch and a quarter thick concrete with a layer of razor sharp expanded metal, probably a quarter by quarter, throughout the entire mess. And cutting through this and trying to get it down was brutal. We tried everything. We had Tanya in here, which by the way is the name of our hammer, sledgehammer that is, and had her in here beating the hell out of it, couldn't get it, could not get it. We tried pry bar after pry bar, wasn't having it. Then I got the grinder out and started cutting three foot swaths, that wasn't having it, and we gave up. We walked on to other projects, and then when we came back to this job full time, we've been dreading getting the ceiling down. So in that year time, I was researching like crazy, trying to find a way to get the ceiling down. Couldn't find anything. I couldn't find anyone to even say that they've ever seen it before, I've done it before. So I don't know the history on why someone did a ceiling like this, but it was impressive and I would like to shake that man's hand because it, it, it was a work of art and it was done really well. But it needed to come down. So I started out with four foot swat or four inch swaths and then six inch, eight inch, 10 inch. And I just kept going until we figured out the magic number of how we can get the most amount out with the fewest number of cuts. And we figured out about 12 to 16 inches, somewhere in there, worked really well. We got in there with pry bars, popped it down and we got both of these ceilings out in one day. I was stoked absolutely stoked that it got done so fast. We ended up taking that whole load to the dump in one shot and that ended up being 2,600 pounds of concrete and steel that we pulled out of the ceiling. Uh, so <laughs> out of all the things we got going on, I'm absolutely tickled that this is finished. And it happened fast enough that we were allowed to jump on to the next big thing. And this house, originally had knob and tube wiring throughout the entire house. And there was a significant fire that happened in the basement level over there that destroyed a couple of floor joists. Now, those floor joists should have been replaced back when the wiring got repaired. It didn't, whatever, it was fine. And I decided, well, I'll replace a couple of the lambs out of the main beam that's under there and a couple of the floor joists and maybe some of the sheathing and it'll be good to go, we'll, we'll move on. But in true form to working with me, the rule of ugly came into play. Now the floor joists next to it had smoke damage to it. Not that critical, it wasn't damaging the wood, it was fine, but it looked awful. So I replaced that floor joist and then I replaced the sheathing above that. So the product grew like most projects do. And we can show you that. So from this point here to that wall, the floor joists are replaced. The beam underneath here has two new lambs on it. The original were two by eight rough cut, 
and we went with 2x10 dimensional, so it's a little bit beefier. And then I also created a girder across here so that I can land my timber frame on it when it comes time to do that. Now, originally this house, with the fireplace here, had a chimney below here that came up through, went through the ceiling and the roof, and that was pulled out when I did the roof job. And this whole area here is completely rotten. That chimney had been leaking for a long time, and so the water would come down the edge of the brickwork, get into the woodwork, and all this was completely rotted. And the wall here had sunk down, the wall on this side had sunk down, and now all that is jacked up and level and good to go. And now we have to rework the rest of the floor to get this level -er. <laughs> Uh, once we open up the rest of this wall. All right, let's go outside and show you the big job. Every bit of what Nick and I wanted to do was not this wall. And, but I looked at the forecast for this week and it's gonna be bitterly cold all week. So I didn't wanna push it off any further and I really wanted this wall done. Well, mother nature ended up agreeing with that decision and we got on it and it, the winds died right down. The snow picked up, which was fine. It ended up being about 22, 26 degrees, and it was perfect. At the end of the day, I was so pleased that the wall got finished, and it was completely safe the entire day. Nick and I kept checking in with each other. He got a little bit cold. You may not want to admit it, but he got cold. Feet got cold. Feet got cold. Um, me, I was fine, because I was running up and down the staging all day, lifting the materials. It, it was an active day. It was a good day. We got a lot done. Um, so, without further ado, I'll show you. that were damaged by the smoke. This slam and this one were both damaged to the point of being charred from the fire damage. And one of these were charred and this one was charred. So I went ahead and replaced all of these because they had smoke damage and they're a little saggy. Uh, they were also cut. At one point someone had, we don't know why, had big chunks missing from it. So I went ahead and just replaced those while we were here. Uh, this one was in three different pieces. Why? Don't know. So I went ahead and replaced that one. And... Right. And now we've got the temporary posts in. And as we continue to level the floor and get everything situated where we want it, we'll get these out. Uh, we pull it apart. I'm, I'm guessing this was coal storage here. It was all framed out. And so we removed all that and opened it up, cleaned it up. And... Yeah, cleaned up everything else. So, if you got any questions about the process or you know what we're doing, uh, you know, put in put down in the suggestion box or comment box down below, and I look forward to hearing from you. Until next time, see ya.